This is the second Friday Fireside, and I'm here with Cal Shalotin from uh, Innovit. Hi, Cal. How are you? Hello. And uh, uh, to, to, to start, I, I must share with our audience my question that I asked Cal, and how in the world does he get his hair to do that? Uh, so thank you very much for noticing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I take a lot of pride in it. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, first of all, hello, everybody. Uh, I hope everyone listening is uh, safe and healthy and your families are, are in good shape. Um, uh, how do I get my hair? To be completely honest, I do absolutely nothing. Uh, I woke up this morning, uh, brushed my teeth, and changed my clothes, and that's practically it. There you go. Um, but uh, I don't know, maybe it's many years of, uh, of hair gel that just at some point it just stuck. Or, or depending, it's many years of just trying to pull your hair out, trying to make sense out of this business that we're in. Uh, I'm actually not pulling my hair. I'm excited about this business uh, in the past 12 years. Uh, challenges and ups and downs, but, um, but excitement all around. Okay, so let's, let's get into that. So tell us about uh, Innovid and uh, what does it do? And, and I know you're the founder, but you do more than just having founded it. So what does it do and what do you do? Sure. Um, so Innovit is, um, uh, is a software company we started about uh, 12 years ago uh, with the mission that television is going to move to the internet and there will be uh, a need for a software platform to help marketers in that world. And what does that mean? Um, there are three parts to our platform. Uh, we, first of all, we offer software predominantly to the buy side of advertising, to uh, um, media buying agencies and uh, marketing department within brands um, that uh, need a management software, an omni-channel management software for uh, TV mar digital TV marketing. So it has three components. I'll do it quick. I'm sorry for the long answer, but uh, uh, it has three components. At the core, it's an ad-serving technology. We're very proud to be uh, among, if not the largest video ad-serving technology for the buy side in the United States. Uh, we operate in many, many countries, um, um, uh, but we have, a, we have a very large market share in the U.S. Um, on top of the, on the video ad-serving and decision engine, there are two other applications. One is, uh, um, is, a, is a creative set of tools, anything from personalization, data-driven video, um, um, sequential messaging, anything that a marketer would like to do on the actual, think about it as the payload of the video. Uh, and the second part, the second application or set of applications is around measurement. Okay, so now, no, we know what what uh, you do, what they do. What what is your job there? What do you do? So I'm CTO by title. Um, what I do changed by the week. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, at least what this week uh, is uh, is up to. Uh, generally, I'm uh, I'm mostly at a, at a very high level. I'm focusing on a lot of our uh, business development and partnership activities, um, and uh, specifically around new product initiative. For example. In the past uh, over a year now, we've been um, working to launch a new product line around television uh, reach and frequency. This is a product we announced at the end of last year together with Roku uh, to bringing linear television, traditional linear, together with C CTV uh, and, and combining it together to answer the question, how many households am I reaching and what's the overlap between all the different networks and between the different channels uh, or the segments of, uh, of media. So this is something that I've been focusing a lot on the uh, striking the deals, setting up the product, and, uh, and a bunch of other things. I remember quite a few years ago when Tom Freston was the head of MTV Networks before he was the head of Viacom, and he, were, he and I were talking, and he gave me something that just resonates to this day. He said, I just want to know who's watching my stuff, you know? Yeah. And we he, haven't he made it easier that. to figure that out, have we? No, actually, uh, a lot more complicated. Uh, thanks God, there's a lot of things you can watch on television, and specifically in marketing and marketing tech, there's a lot of ways to buy that. Uh, and it's very, very hard to, um, to fully understand what are you actually, what are you getting? Maybe you got 10 million impression, but what does that mean uh, in terms of household, unique household, let alone demographic or people? Um, 
And if you add more variables that uh, there's not a single marketer that only buys a single network, you buy many different things. Some of those are aggregators in the CTV world, uh, companies like Roku or Amazon, uh, or programmatic media buying platforms like the Trade Desk. Uh, or if you buy a specific network that also have syndications, it's very, very hard to understand the overlap, the duplication, um, and the, um, uh, the additive nature of each and every one of them. Okay, so right now, both with uh, COVID-19, but in the broader sense, how's Innovid doing? Um, we've been very fortunate to, uh, to, bet on, uh, uh, to bet on this train of online video as a big theme, but specifically on connected television uh, a couple of years past, and it's been a massive growth vehicle for us. Um, so overall, uh, maybe I'll zoom in on the, on the COVID-19 part, uh, more specifically the last two months or so. Uh, so the company is doing, uh, uh, is doing very well. The overall marketing um, uh, ecosystem is clearly following GDP. And as consumer spending is going down and economy is going down, 22 million people out of, uh, uh, out of unemployed, um, overall marketing declines. But there are a couple of silver lining, um, and I would say uh, streaming audio and streaming video probably would be the, the two largest verticals that people are home, and that's where, where eyeballs are and where time is spent. Um, so actually, we're seeing a big spike uh, of, uh, of viewership on connected televisions as a device. We're seeing large year-over-year -year growth of our connected television channel. Um, there's clearly several marketers that pull dollar out, but there's uh, um, a significant amount of marketers that and verticals uh, that are uh, that are increasing spend. Procter and Gamble just released uh, last week their uh, their third quarter earnings or calendar Q1 earnings, uh, and if you read uh, or listen to the call, all the stuff that they mentioned is they're upping their budget on marketing, and we've seen that. Uh, that, that CPG as a category has been increasing in spend throughout this uh, throughout this time. Same thing on telecom. Same thing. Actually, just in the last few weeks, we, we've seen a, a big uh, uh, resurgence of the retail category, specifically on on e retail. But uh, but overall, is the retail category is, is making a comeback. Um, so yeah, we have seen a deep. Uh, in the second, second part of, of March, maybe the biggest one is at the end of the quarter, beginning of the, the second quarter, but it seems like things are starting to pick up. So in a couple of weeks, we're going to actually, next week we have uh, uh, Rob Weisbord from Sinclair on, and following that we have Evan Tracy, who is a chief strategist for the RNC, even though he and I have vastly different politics. Um, he's a really interesting guy. Political it's, spend. So it's only is, so it's only up from here. Yeah, I know. So political spend is is uh, quiet now, but it's going to come roaring back uh, as soon as we return to some sense of normalcy, and that kind of relates then to what is uh, what is your company going to do? What are you planning for? What are you modeling for? For the return of "quote unquote" normal media business, um, so I'll generalize that not specifically around uh, politics or political advertising, but more, more general. Yep. First of all, I must say we don't know. Uh, we're we're estimating. We're taking our best bet. Uh, we're uh, we're asking around, or guesstimating would be the best way to say that. Uh, but we're asking a lot of a lot of marketers who also them uh, are not hundred percent sure. Uh, how and when, but the general uh, the general theme that we've been getting from financial institution and for marketing organization is that uh, there will be a comeback, a uh, pretty large comeback. Um, uh, either towards it depends on how uh, the company will the the country will come back um, or reopen, but it's either towards the end of second quarter. Uh, or beginning to mid uh, third quarter, but uh, anyone that uh, um, that we are discussing and, and have any type of guess to the next steps, and clearly all of this stuff is just guessing, um, is that uh, we will see a big comeback. Um, however, there's a couple of things that will will definitely change, and we're we're now uh, actually spending quite a lot of time on thinking about the rebound or or the next the next wave. Yeah. Um, 
mostly about uh, there are definitely going to be brands that will take them or verticals that will take them longer uh, uh, to rebound. The travel industry, specifically air travel, will probably will take longer time um, uh, to come back. Uh, but a lot of digital type businesses, anything from streaming services, uh, e-retailers, and every delivery-based business is thriving right now. Um, and and, let, and specifically on marketing spend, um, but we are seeing a, a few tactics that uh, that started to be uh, a couple more crystallized. Uh, first thing is again growth of CTV has been uh, going up. People are getting more Roku devices, more Amazon Fire. The lack of sports events disconnecting from uh, from pay TV. This is not going back. Uh, there will be more people streaming media, streaming video. Uh, in the future. Now, with the launch of new ad-supported services, Peacock, uh, Quibi to some extent, uh, and even HBO Max coming up uh, with some ad-enabled ad product, there will be more premium VOD services that will have uh, um, ads uh, involved as well. So this is as a category, uh, it will, will increase. Another thing is uh, a lot more focus on performance. Uh, we started getting a lot more brands asking us, how do I measure not just impression or GRPs or even completion rate as all of those are proxies, but something a lot more specific, apps download, site traffic, um, uh, or actual product in carts or orders uh, for all of the business that could compare uh, spend into actions. Uh, we're getting that uh, happen a lot and we believe that this would happen in the future as well. I think you're right. I think that we are likely to see just from what I am observing in the business, uh, linear local television is up. Uh, certainly online is up. Streaming is up like crazy. Spend is down, but a lot of those companies are just holding their water until they mm -hmm. see a reason to spend because they can actually generate commerce or advertising uh, results on it. I have a sense that in the third quarter, uh, you're going to be a busy fellow. You're going to be a busy company because you're going to have an awful lot of people coming back into the market all at once. We sure hope uh, for Innovate, but honestly, more for uh, <laughs> for the economy and for uh, and for the overall business is that uh, um, people will go back to work, while people will still consume media, and uh, consumer spending will uh, will go back. Well, let's hope that's true. And guess what? We have uh, said we we're going to go five to 10 minutes. I think that's what we've done now. Uh, so, Tal Chalosin from Innovit, thank you very much for your time. I will, I will suggest to you, though, I do, I do have a neighbor. Um, he is uh, a local politician. He's a sheep farmer, and his hair does about the same thing yours does, but I won't tell you what I've always kidded him that he uses on his hair. Mm. And with that note, we will say goodbye. <laughs> And uh, we'll be released first thing Friday morning. Cal, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rick. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Stay safe.